Hey, what's going on guys? My name is David Caprino. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't taken the time yet to subscribe, go ahead and do that now. This video and many others I have are going to be packed with great Air Force information that are going to help you out along your journey and decide whether you want to enlist or not. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button and follow me. In this video, I'm going to talk about five tips to prepare for a TDY or a temporary duty. One thing I'm going to describe real quickly for those of you that are not familiar with what a TDY is. Again, it's a temporary duty and for the most part, based on your job or at least once in your Air Force career, you're going to go on what they call a TDY. So basically, you have this qualification or this refresher training that you're going to have for your job and you go from wherever you're at to this training location and you practice whatever that skill set is. So some AFSCs or jobs in the Air Force could go more than others. My first tip where it can get really confusing, especially if you're a first time TDYer, is make sure that you read all of the documents carefully. So one document in particular, it's called your RIP or your reporting instructions. This is basically going to tell you everything you need to know about your TDY, where it's at, what time it starts, what to bring, uh, if there's anything you have to do beforehand, any other certifications before your TDY, how everything is going to be paid, and everything in between. Do you get a rental car? Who is going to buy the tickets for flying? I mean, quite literally, almost everything is going to be in this RIP, which the facilitators of the class should send to you, or there's going to be a website I know you can pull from. If it's like a big TDY that's more known, you can go to a certain website that you'll learn about, and uh, you can get your RIP from there. Along with these documents is your orders through DTS. Depending on the TDY, you may have to create your orders through DTS if they're not going to be created for you. You'll learn about what that is uh, whenever you're in. You don't need to worry about that term right now, but basically it's your orders of how you're going to get there, and what transportation you're going to use, how it's being paid for, and those are your orders to show that uh, you are supposed to go to this TDY. Another thing with documents is make sure if you get any emails from your facilitators who are teaching the class, uh, make sure you read those carefully as well. There may be some other information that they add in there or if there's any updates. I know there's a TDY I went on where they changed the class three times before I even got there. So make sure that you read the email because it's gonna be separate from the RIP sometime. They changed the time I was supposed to be there in the email, but not in the RIP, the attachment for the email, because they wanted to keep that RIP the same because they were going to do like a mass update. So they didn't want to keep adding little updates as they go through all the different classes that they were sending to this TDY. So again, make sure you're reading your emails from the people who are teaching the class. My second tip for preparing for a TDY is to make sure you do all your research and paperwork beforehand and make sure everything is final and good to go and you have at least two copies. This one is exceptionally important and you're gonna hear probably throughout your Air Force career. If you got a place to go, make sure you go to that place before you're supposed to be there. That way you know how to get there, if there's any construction the day before, or if there's an alternate route, or if maybe something is a one-way and you have to drive around the base to get there. I've heard of that happening just because of some of the locations of these buildings. So make sure you do all of your research prior to going to the TDY. If you have something that you have to go to at 7 a.m., don't wake up at 6.30 just because your GPS tells you it's a 15 minute drive. It could be a 15 minute drive, but there's a bunch of different obstacles and uh, you don't wanna be having to drive and then listen to Siri tell you directions. One TDY I took was in another country in Japan. So one thing for there is that I could have used a rental car, but for whatever reason, there was a miscommunication there and I ended up not having a rental car. Now mind you, I would have been driving in another country. I didn't even know that they drove on the opposite side of the road and there's all sorts of preparation that goes along with that. So make sure if you're going somewhere, especially in another country, that you are aware of basically how they operate over there. Do they drive on the other side of the road? Do you need an international driver's license? These are all things that I got screwed with because I didn't do enough research myself. Another thing is whenever you get to the airport or the base you're going to is where's a taxi line. This saved me when I was in Japan a ton because I could just go to a taxi line and I could tell them, hey, take me to this building and they'll take you around to that building. Another thing, and this goes along with being international, is do they take credit cards? There were some spots in Korea and some spots in Japan where they didn't take credit cards so I had to have cash which means whenever I'm going there and you're going through the airport make sure you stop at an ATM and take out some money and then get it converted if you need to but make sure that you have cash at all these TDYs that you go to now in the States it may be different I never had a problem in the States because obviously I had all American credit cards I was in the States where it was just easy for that transaction to happen there was no language barrier in the event that you're in a foreign country just keep that stuff in mind because things may be a little bit different there some other stuff to research I'll side of just work related things. Ask people about the area. See if you can find places to eat, places to go. There's a lot of times for TDYs and of course depending on which one you go to that there's a good opportunity to travel around the area, try different food. When I went to Japan I had some of the best sushi and some of the best ramen I've ever had and that also came from me just talking to people in class. Uh, in addition to that be social, communicate with people because there are some people who were TDY there but were already stationed at that base and they showed some of us around the area and showed us some really good places to eat 
good places to shop, fun things to do, and everything like that. My third tip is making sure that you get all your paperwork finalized and you get it done early and on time. There was one time where I had a TDY and I did not know that I had to process my orders into DTS and I had to do them literally two or three days before going on this TDY when they should have been done weeks in advance. Make sure you get your paperwork squared away early and as soon as possible. Everything as far as travel, how you're gonna get there, you're gonna have to schedule your own hotel most times in my experience and especially where you're getting your rental car from. You know, they wanna make sure that you're picking the cheapest, most viable option. There's no reason to pick a crazy the exorbitant expensive feature for Hertz because you like the Escalade with the heated seats. You're not going to be able to get that. They're going to pick a modest compact car or something of that nature. So make sure you have the right expectation going in there and that your paperwork matches everything and you keep all of your receipts. And I would say at least two to three months after you come back from your TDY, just in case anything is messed up at finance. In addition to getting your paperwork squared away, make sure that if you're going to be using certain software, like I know for my job, there's certain software that I use, depending on the TDY I go to, I have to make sure that I have access to that. My fourth tip for preparing for a TDY is to make sure that you pack smart, okay? You are going to be living out of a suitcase for anywhere of up to a week to two weeks, depending on the TDY. Remember, you're there for work. Obviously, if you're going TDY and it's something for your job and you're doing some heavy training, uh, you're going to have to bring some certain equipment with you. There are some times where I had to... Uh, travel with a big suitcase and half of it was my uniform and some of the gear I was using for the TDY. So in which case make sure you pack smart. Of course if you're going somewhere for a week or two weeks you know you want to make sure you pack appropriately and make sure you know the temperature for the area for where you're going. I was going to Japan in the middle of summer. I didn't know what to pack or what to expect. I never heard anything about the climate of Japan. I don't know if it's cold, if it's warm. Just make sure you do research and basically pack appropriately. Don't pack too much because again with your orders you will only get up to a certain amount. You may only get one check bag and then one backpack. So again, if you have to bring gear with you and your personal items, make sure you're packing smart. And my last tip to prepare for a TDY, and it's going to sound a bit cliche and a little Air Forcey, but you're there for work not so much play. So of course people talk about TDYs, the places they go, fun they have on TDYs. Remember that you're also there for work. You're there to learn, to train, whatever it may be, gather a new skill set. I have heard of people who go on TDYs, things get wild, they show up late for class, and they end up either getting sent back or get paperwork when they come back to their unit after the TDY. It is very possible and still very likely that you can get in trouble just because you're TDY and away from your unit and you're going to class. Maybe you don't have to be in uniform for it. Some of them you don't even have to be in uniform. Don't get in trouble while you're TDY because it will look 10 times worse. And here's a bonus tip. Tip number six for preparing for a TDY is to ask other people that you know in your shop if they've been to this TDY before. A lot of people who have already been there will be like, oh yeah, here's where you stay. Sometimes you get a choice on where you get to stay. Here's a car company to go to because it's it's just easier because they're familiar with military. There are some times where I've known people who've gone TDY and they didn't get the military discount like they say they do through DTS, but uh, they did in person or, or whatever the confusion may be. But sometimes not everything is gonna work out in person like it does online. Ask other people who've gone on this TDY what they packed. Now, of course, if you got stuff for your job that you need to bring, bring that stuff. And then if people were like, oh yeah, I only brought three shorts and two shirts and like a hat, then you know that you can pack light because maybe there's not a lot of stuff to do around the area. Or if there's a lot of hiking, someone may be like, oh yeah, bring your hiking boots or uh, make sure you bring sunscreen because it's very sunny at this time of the year for where you're going. So talk to other people, do some research, share my video and help other people out for preparing for a TDY. And that's all I got for you. This was five tips plus a bonus tip for how to prepare for a TDY, whether you're in the Air Force or the military, doesn't matter the branch. These tips are going to help anyone. Thank you guys for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure you share and like the video. Leave a comment down below if you have any other tips that helped you out or if you have any further questions. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.